The content in this video was created for documentary and educational purposes only, so if you're not 18 or older, shut it off right now. And if we disappear, go to CannabisLifestyleTV.com. Like we always do about this time. Once upon a time, this industry was known for more of the grassroots, bob and pop type of products or businesses. A lot of them that really shape this industry today, especially for us growers. Whether this is a home grower inside of their, let's say, garage who, who helped revolutionize the way that we train plants, or a botanist who has a recipe for soil who ends up bringing that soil to market so that way the masses, or at least a good chunk of the people who are growing, are able to get it. Or a self-taught botanist or engineer who, that helps change the way that we approach our garden in general. They weren't just created by a corporation in some giant warehouse or facility or R&D facility. It was made by us, by the community, by growers. But the problem with a small start is sometimes you can have a small impact. And sometimes that can be really difficult on an entrepreneur or on an, an inventor. This is where distributors ended up getting the power in this industry. Now there's a few different distributors out there, but one in particular, actually the largest in particular, is known as Hawthorne Gardening Company. You either work with them or plan on hitting the road like Chris Farley and Tommy Boy because you need to be hitting every single location and pitching your product. God, let's do this. It's gonna be me, it's gonna be me. Unfortunately, that just isn't the way things work nowadays. A lot of people go with a central distributor and with those distributors, they're able to get their products distributed everywhere. From small mom and pop grow stores to the larger chains to even places like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards and all that. So sometimes for these small businesses and entrepreneurs, the easiest way to get their products out there to the masses is to work with companies like this. Who is Hawthorne Gardening Company? Well, Hawthorne is a subsidiary of Hawthorne Gardening Company's division of the Scott's Miracle Grow Company. Hawthorne is the world's largest vertically integrated manufacturer, direct seller, and service provider dedicated to servicing North America's licensed providers and hydroponic retail industry. Now, the big game changer for Hawthorne was when they got into the industry, specifically in 2015 when they purchased General Hydroponics. General Hydroponics is one of the big ones, yes, but there's even larger ones. Believe it or not, there's even larger ones out there. So you're looking at companies like Sun Light Supply and Hydro Farm. Now, if you work at a grow store or if you're familiar with them, you definitely have heard of these. These are going to be where you're getting a lot of your products from. Now, Sunlight Supply is the largest distributor of hydroponic products in the United States. If you've gotten things from the grow store, you may have gotten them from Sunlight Supply, which actually you're getting them from Hawthorne, which is Scott's Miracle Grow. Now, while Hydro Farm isn't completely owned by Hawthorne, they do own a large percentage of them from Hawthorne Equity Partners. They're subsidiary investment company. Other brands owned by Hawthorne are Botanicare, Gavita, Can Filters, Hurricane Vans, Mother Earth, Titan Controls, Sun Systems, Rhizoflora Turpinator, Hydrologic, Grow Pro, Dewey Scientific, Fresh Filter, Par Pro, Hydroflow, and Rainmaker, just to name a few. They also distribute for companies like Quest Humidifiers, Emerald Harvest, Psycho, Blue Lab, Supernatural, Trim Pro, Method 7, Grodan, Royal Gold, Hygrozyme, Rock Nutrients, Nectar for the Gods, Integra Boost, Down to Earth, and more. So it's likely that you do have one of these products in your garden and you don't even realize that you're giving money to the man, so to speak. Now, why is Hawthorne even an issue? Why, why do I even have a gripe of it? Why do you even hear people saying anything about it? Is it because it's a greedy corporation? Is it because they're trying to take over this industry? Well, there's quite a bit of stuff, actually. Let's circle back a little bit to some of the history of Scott's miracle Grow and why they have the bad name that they have. The CEO of Scott's miracle Grow, Jim Hagedorn, says that he'll spend as much as a half a billion dollars to buy out the cannabis industry. Horace Hagedorn and his son, Jim Hagedorn, came together and blew Scott's up. Now together, they realized over time, it wasn't gonna be able to expand and, and get to the point where it was gonna grow and take over the entire industry. So Jim Hagedorn has been quoted saying, I came back, I told everyone, we're doing it. If you don't like it, leave. We're doing it. It's beyond stopping. And we're not getting into pot growing. We're talking dirt, fertilizer, pesticides, growing systems, lights. You know, it's a multi-million dollar business and we've got no growth in our core. Are you guys stupid? Well. Obviously, they weren't stupid. They jumped all over it, and they're taking over a lot of the smaller companies and even some of the larger companies to the point where people don't even realize what they're purchasing. When they're buying this product, they think they're giving it to a small company, but no, that, that money's actually going to a gigantic corporation who is just pushing more into this space and pushing more into this space.
RICO violations result in $85 million lawsuits. Scott's Miracle Grow knowingly sold wild bird food treated with pesticides that are hazardous to birds. In 2018, the jury in the San Francisco Superior Court of California found that Monsanto had failed to warn school groundskeeper Dwayne Johnson, not The Rock, and other consumers of the cancer's risk posed by its weed killers, and awarded Johnson $250 million in punitive damages and about $39 million in compensatory damages. Now, essentially, they were selling extremely hazardous products and bypassing laws that were designed to protect us as the consumer, which is pretty dirty, if I say so myself. On top of that, there's also company offenses that range for environmental side of $13.3 million and employment-related offenses of $889,000. So, yeah, they've shucked out the money, but they make so much. I mean, literally, $4.1 billion is what they're estimated in the last year that it really doesn't matter to, to toss a little bit of shekels out when they do something that's shady or illegal for a larger gain in the long term. Now, since acquiring Hawthorne Gardening Company, Scott's Miracle Grow saw a company-wide third quarter sales increase 8%, driven by Hawthorne's growth of 48% in the third quarter alone of 2021. So the explosive growth for them has literally been because they've got into this cannabis industry. Their main product over time now is being known as not so quality, not as ethical, and people are trying to get more away from that. So you may still be using products like miracle Grow outside for your regular crops and things like that, but that's not really where their money has been of recent. It's really been through the cannabis industry specifically. Buying up all of these companies and being able to control the industry and control the market has been the growth strategy for them. Now, another concern a lot of people have is that these companies are going to get into the sides of pesticides and GMOs towards cannabis. And that's where it could definitely be a detrimental thing. Thinking about genetically modified organisms in cannabis that are harmful or can potentially have cancer causing things in them like we've already seen with Monsanto in the past, it really just makes one worry like, do we want these guys to be in our industry? Do we want them to have such control and such direction of where things go? For the most part, we really don't have any say when a corporation this big is buying up all of the competition. Everyone that they potentially would look at as a competitor, they're trying to buy. Another negative side of Hawthorne being involved is the fact that they can bypass these small grow stores and go right to Home Depot and Lowe's and the larger big box stores. And it's going to, again, potentially help us as consumers financially and be able to have more people get this product, but it potentially could hurt these small businesses that have been there since day one. Now, while it's easy to just grill a company like this and to find all the bad, there is some good that they're trying to do. They're at least attempting to do. Specifically, what I'm talking about is the Hawthorne Social Justice Fund. The work of the fund grantees includes Last Prisoner Project, which is dedicated to cannabis criminal justice form, working to release people with low-level cannabis convictions from prisons and states where it's legal to grow and help provide pathways to employment. Marijuana Policy Project Foundation, which is a racial justice and social equity project seeking to elevate cannabis reform as a civil rights issue at the national level and increase diverse representation within the legal cannabis industry. Minorities for Medical Marijuana, which provides advocacy, outreach, research, and training as it relates to business, social reform, public policy, and health and wellness in the cannabis industry. Its Project Clean Slate program offers expungement clinics nationwide for those affected by past cannabis possession charges, while Project Safe Access NV assists members of the Latino community in accessing medical marijuana. New Leaf Project, which works to build intergenerational wealth via the legal cannabis industry for communities disproportionately harmed by cannabis criminalization, including black and brown communities. Hawthorne is also a corporate sponsor for the New School Accelerator Program, which offers financial support and technical expertise on cannabis startup financing and operating an ancillary business. And also United Returning Citizens, which provides job search and training, life and financial literacy skills, and transitional and stable housing primarily for citizens re-entering society from correctional facilities. This partnership focuses on workforce development, helping people with cannabis convictions in a high unemployment area, specifically Youngstown, Ohio, find employment and start business in hemp and indoor cultivation. March 2018, Flower, a Toronto-based cannabis company with operations in Canada, Europe, and Australia, and Hawthorne Canada jointly announced the completion of the world's first cannabis research development facility of its kind. Now this R&D center includes state-of-the-art laboratories, indoor grow spaces, and training areas in a single location. Now, Flower tests the systems and techniques using Hawthorne's advanced lighting, fertilization, and irrigation systems, growing mediums and research protocols. In addition to that, Flower intends to focus its own research on cannabis genetics and integrated growing systems in line with its goal delivering premium quality cannabis products through highly efficient cultivation. Operations will be led by Dr. Darren Kaplan, the first person in North America to earn a PhD focused on cannabis cultivation and production. So, there's some good. They're doing some good. 
And I like to see that they're trying to push forward for this industry, but is it for their own gain? What do you think? Now, corporate cannabis is taking over a lot of different areas, whether it be the grocery stores, the products, dispensaries, uh, commercial cultivation facilities, even when it comes to media and content. It's just really difficult for a lot of these small companies to grow without collaborating or working with one of these giant corporations. Now, is this good for our industry or bad? You be the judge. And hopefully that's a decision that you can make on your own based on watching this video, doing some of your own research and critical thinking. Now, when it comes to what we can do, what's the, the thing that us as consumers, what's the power that we have? Well, it's just that, we're consumers. We dictate the market. We decide what we purchase. We decide what's in our gardens. There's so many products out there nowadays that we can really decide who we wanna buy from, when we wanna buy from them, and how we wanna buy from them whether that be getting through a large company like Amazon or directly from the company online. 2021 and beyond, we've got so many different products that are coming out. So let your wallet kind of vote, let your wallet decide where this industry goes because we don't have to work with these large companies. We don't have to support corporate cannabis. It's really up to us, the consumers, the growers, and the advocates. If you like videos like this, do me a favor, smash that like button, share it with your fellow grow me, someone who may not know the products that they have aren't what they think. Make sure you check out Watch Seal TV if you want to get your Seal TV gear. Bow. Check it out. What's a product in your garden that you didn't realize that you had from Hawthorne? Drop it below in the comment section. And with that being said, y'all, stay lifted.